My friends, I hope you all are doing well. Welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. Currently, I am on top of a remote mountain in North Carolina. The temperature is 32 degrees. There's a little bit of snow that's on the ground that fell this morning and more snow is on the way. As far as the time goes, it's about 15 minutes till one o'clock. I'm at 5,541 feet and currently I am looking for a campsite. Not really a campsite. It's not like there's established sites here, but I'm looking for a place to camp. I've been hiking along this forest road for about four miles now. Basically, I'm at the top of the mountain and now it's time to get situated. We need to get ready for the incoming storm. Everybody, I think I have found the perfect spot to camp at tonight. I have a nice level flat spot over here next to this tree. I have two trees here that I can use to set up my tarp. At the same time, I have a lot of protection inside of this forest here. So while wind will be an issue tomorrow, I have quite a bit of protection. Let's take a minute here and let's talk about the camp that I'm setting up. First, let's talk about the gear. With the tent, this is from Nature Hike, and this is their one-person instant setup tent. 
As you all saw, it took about 30 seconds to set this up. It is super fast. It is ultra impressive in that regards. This is a very small one person tent. And because it's so small, I'm using a specialized sleeping bag for this adventure. The sleeping bag is from Marmot and it is called the Sawtooth Membrane. This sleeping bag features a membrane that goes all the way around it that prevents water from coming into contact with the down. That way, if you're inside of a bivy or a small tent, your sleeping bag stays dry, even if there's moisture or water present. This sleeping bag is rated for 15 degrees and by morning tomorrow, it should be around 19. Here in a little bit, we'll get the thermometer out and of course, we'll track it throughout the night and tomorrow. If the forecast is correct, we will be getting close to the comfort range of this sleeping bag. Now I need to begin focusing on setting up a tarp. As it stands right now, the wind is coming in this way. So I'm going to set up the tarp with the back sloping down, basically blocking the wind. If at some point in time the wind direction changes, we will have to change the orientation of the tarp or maybe set up some walls. We'll see what happens. Folks, I kid you not. The moment that I took the tarp out of the storage bag, the wind direction changed. It is now coming this direction. Because of this, I'm going to set up the tarp with the back sloping this direction, the front facing this way. And if I need to, I'll add walls. That's all that I can do. <laughs> you gotta love it, everybody. The weather's confused. As you all could see, it has begun sleeting. This is not snow, this is sleet. In other words, this is like little balls of ice. And as you can also see, the ground is beginning to get covered. Oh yeah, everybody, it is on. It's almost two o'clock. The forecast was for like rain and snow to begin after 3 p.m., so it's a little bit early. That's okay though. All I know is that I'm super excited to be out for a real snowstorm, crossing my fingers. I shouldn't get ahead of myself, but I'm excited. Hopefully later on tonight, it's gonna kick in and it's gonna dump. The current forecast is for up to five inches of snow by tomorrow morning.
While the coffee I just made is cooling down, let's talk about this tarp setup for a second. Now you can see here that I have it sloped. That way the snow, the sleet, and the ice will roll down the tarp. Additionally, I have one more tip for you before we have some coffee. This is an important one. With the guy lines coming off of this tarp, when I take that guy line that goes from the tarp and I attach it to the tree, I always make sure to wrap it a few times before I tie my knot. That way, all the tension from the tarp goes through the guy line into those wraps and not into the knot that I just tied. When you wrap it like that, you take all of the pressure off the knot. This way, the next day, you can easily untie your tarp and put it up. If you go straight from the tarp, tie it to the tree, and you don't take the pressure off, by morning, the knot may be impossible to take off. My friends, this coffee is fantastic, but I have to admit, it's hard to enjoy it when cold air is blowing right in your face. And that's exactly what's happening now. The winds have picked up again, and instead of coming from this way, they're now coming towards me. So, yeah. <laughs> As I mentioned before, the winds are a little bit confused so far with this trip. So after I have this cup of coffee, I'm going to put up a wall here. Basically, a wall big enough to block the wind just from hitting me square in the face here. I mean, just that little bit of cold air, it's just enough to cool me down, to make me cold. Speaking of it being cold, I need to get out the thermometer. I put the thermometer on the tree over here and already it is dropping fast. It went from like 54 degrees to 35 in the matter of seconds. I suspect that it's around 32 degrees, something like that. Without a doubt, this sleet's not melting or anything, so it's gotta be very, very close to freezing. Speaking of sleet, that has ended. It sleeted for about two hours, then it stopped, and then it's just kind of been on and off. As it stands right now, we are under a winter weather advisory for up to five inches of snow. If you take a look at last year's adventures, we basically didn't receive any snow, so there were no snow adventures. But if you go back on the channel, you will find some crazy wintertime trips. Trips in blizzards with feet and feet of snow, ice storms, snow storms, and more.
It is about 15 minutes till five o'clock. The sun will go down at 510, and currently it is 28 degrees. No sleet at the moment, plenty of wind though. Technically, the winter weather advisory goes into effect at 7 p.m., so we still have some time before that really kicks in. In addition to the wind advisory, there's a high wind warning that goes into effect tomorrow morning. So my plan is, for the most part, wake up, have coffee, have breakfast, break everything down, and get out of here. I want to get off of the top of this mountain before the winds kick up to 50, 60 miles an hour. Here in just a little bit, dinner will be ready. I'm having a Beyond Meal. This is biscuits and gravy. Let's see, is there sausage in this? Yes, there is sausage. I generally don't eat breakfast in the morning when I'm out on a trip, but I gotta be honest, I love biscuits and gravy. <laughs> There's actually a sausage in the picture I just didn't notice. Anyways, it is getting dark. It's almost 5.30. It's currently not snowing, but it is still windy. And ever so often, it gets really, really foggy. It's still windy. I would say it's more like breezy. For the most part, the winds have died down, which is nice. It's actually making it quite comfortable. The truth is, it's not that cold. It's about 28 degrees. That's not bad. 28 degrees with the wind blowing in your face, that definitely sucks. But 28 degrees by itself, it's not too bad. I have to tell you all, the Beyond Biscuits and Gravy is fantastic. I think the Pinnacle Foods Biscuits and Gravy is just a little bit better, has like a little bit more spice, a little bit more of a kick to it, but this is really, really good. The other day, everybody, I was on YouTube and I just got done watching a video and it auto-played another video. So I looked up and there was like this older gentleman and he was talking about the Navy SEALs and he goes on to like bust someone for being like a fake Navy SEAL. The guy's name is Don Shipley, I believe. And like stumbling upon this channel was just complete accident. But I ended up subscribing. It's a great channel. This dude goes after individuals who fake being a Navy SEAL. And honestly, folks, I cannot believe that's even a thing. I guess I should believe it, but it blows my mind. 
at what people will do. You know what I mean? That guy can bust so many people faking being a Navy SEAL that he can have a YouTube channel dedicated to this. People suck, don't they? <laughs> people, are, people are just terrible. It's amazing. If you haven't seen that channel, make sure to check it out because it is most interesting. If you've been around on the channel for a while, you know that I have a daughter and she's in the military. In fact, she's in the Navy. She's a spook. She deals with military intelligence and over the years, her career has skyrocketed. I remember when we went to like the whole military recruitment thing, she had to go do her placement testing and all that stuff. We had no idea what she was going to get, right? You know, what she would be good for. Her and the recruiter come back from doing the testing and the recruiter is blown away. Because of what my daughter does in the military, I really can't talk about her much. And I certainly can't talk about what she's done or where she's at. I did ask her if I could talk about some of her deployments and she said that I could talk about a few. Her very first deployment was in Afghanistan. And of course I have no idea where specifically, but she said that one night rockets came in and she said that like one was so close to her barracks that it knocked the air conditioner out of the wall. She was okay, but some people were injured. Her second deployment was in Europe and she never did say exactly where she was stationed, but I have a pretty good idea and this is why. While she was stationed wherever she was, we started receiving traffic violation notices from this country just about every single week. So every single week is a snapshot of my daughter driving her car in the city, breaking the law. <laughs> I'm not sure she didn't like know what the laws were or she was just being, you know, careless and free, whatever. I don't remember how many we ended up with. I don't know, like 20 moving violations, something like that. When I say that we ended up with, of course she had to pay for them and all that stuff. For some reason they came to our address, which is pretty funny. As it stands right now, she is back in the United States, but she's on another deployment. As you all can see, I'm inside of the tent now. As far as the time goes, it's almost seven. I decided that I'm just gonna call it a night. It's been a busy day, I'm a little bit tired. Plus, I was thinking, I wanna save that firewood for tomorrow morning. Waking up, having a nice fire when it's snowing outside, hopefully that would be awesome. So that's the plan, we'll see how it all pans out in a little bit. Well everybody, it's around 10 o'clock and it just began snowing. As you all could see by looking outside of the tent here, I decided to leave the tarps up. And the reason for that is simple. This is a dry snow. If you're not familiar with that term, basically it means that like this snow doesn't have a whole lot of moisture to it. In other words, like the flakes, they're really, really small. With the front that's coming through, it is moisture starved. Because of this, the snow is very fine. It's not really sticking to the tarp itself. And because of that, the snow is simply falling off of the tarp, as you see here. Because of these reasons, I decided to leave the tarp up. I think it's good. I don't suspect we'll have any issues. My plan is to go lights out. I will see you all in the morning. I'm going to set my alarm for six o'clock. We'll get up get a fire going, make some coffee, and we'll see how much snow we have on the ground. Everyone, I will see you all in the morning. Good night.
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. As far as the time goes, it is 7.46 in the morning. It is 22 degrees. So yes, this was more of a sleet storm than a snowstorm, but nonetheless, it is beautiful. Everything in the forest is coated. The tarp hasn't been destroyed. Life is good.
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I figured while I was boiling coffee, I'd get the fire going. And let me tell you all, this is so nice. My toes were actually getting cold, but that's no longer the case. I can have my feet right next to the stove, and it feels incredible. Without a doubt, the wind this morning is chaotic. One second, it's this way. The next second, it's that way. It's awful, to be honest. Especially as this fire was getting going, it was just blowing smoke everywhere. I couldn't escape it. But luckily, we have a pretty good fire going now. No more smoke, hot coffee, cold conditions, windy conditions, and it is still sleeting out there. The pile of sleet next to this tarp here, basically that's come off of the tarp, it's impressive. So good, everybody. Ah, like this firewood's not going to last very long because it's so windy, but I'm going to enjoy every single stick. The other day, my friends, a YouTuber named Paul Mesner, I guess by the time you watch this video, it will have been a couple of weeks, but um, he put up a video basically saying that he is done reviewing products because so many of his viewers basically called him out and said that he was a sellout, that he was just selling products, he was a shill for these different companies. I've spoken to Paul in the past on Instagram, and I could tell you all that he seems to be a very nice guy. I'm definitely not as close to him as I am to some other YouTubers, but I could tell you all, just by talking to him, I could tell he's a good dude. He's a good guy. And by watching his videos, talking to him, not once did I ever think that he was being like a shill for different companies. Like not once have I ever thought he was the type of YouTuber that I absolutely hate. There's plenty of them. There's tons of YouTube channels out there. They do gear reviews and it's just nonsense. They're just selling products. This is the thing, Paul. This is the way that I see it. If you're being legit and honest about your reviews, then keep doing them. Keep putting out that information. Keep putting out that perspective. If you're not being honest about it, then stop. Anyways, folks, anyways, YouTube is definitely an interesting place. All that I know is that I'm glad that I don't sell anything. <laughs> I don't want to be involved in it. I don't like it. Most of the channels that are like selling products, they're, the channels that are there to sell nothing but products, they're the ones who do like the crazy faces in their thumbnails, right? I've never understood making weird faces, right? You got to have some dignity, you know what I mean? <laughs> Making yourself look like a fool on your thumbnail for views. Yeah, that's not my style at all. If I look goofy in my thumbnail, it's because I just look goofy. You know what I mean? 
Well, my friends, it is now about 925. As far as the temperature goes, still 21 degrees, still windy, sleet is still falling. This has been a fantastic trip, and I wanna thank you all very much for joining me for this. Because the fire is almost out, I'm gonna call this trip done. It's time for me to pack up and get out of here before the winds really pick up. As it stands right now, we are under a high wind warning. Winds over 65 miles an hour. I've said it over and over again, I don't mind the cold, I don't mind the snow, but I do mind wind. It just takes your body heat and blows it away. And at the same time, it brings down trees and limbs. Wind is the one thing that you don't mess with, folks.
My friends, it is time for me to say goodbye. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up. I do appreciate it. If you want to see more adventures like this, consider supporting the channel, Patreon, and on YouTube. You can join the Wolf Pack. Everybody, take care, be well, stay warm. Let's go home. Thank you.